Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Justin, and today's video is all about these watt cycle batteries. I have two 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries that either I could make a 24 volt system or a larger 12 volt system. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment. And before we get started, let's talk about the batteries. These are identical, so we'll just kind of focus on this battery here. This is a 23 pound battery. So is it better to have one 12 volt, 200 amp power battery as far as terms of weight that may weigh upwards of 50 pounds or to have two of these 100 amp hours that is coming in around 46 pounds. So I'm not sure if that's important to you or not, but these are a lot easier to move around than say those 200 amp hour batteries. Not to say that they're better, I'm just saying portability is a lot simpler when you got two batteries like this. But if you have them connected, you gotta disconnect them and move them around. So there's pros and cons to that. Now, one of the pros of having two batteries is I can make this a larger 12 volt system or turn it into a 24 volt system. Depending on your scenario, that might be important to you. But to do that, if I wanted to create this into a 24 volt system, I would hook this negative into this positive, then use these leads. This would then turn into a, a 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery. If I hook this positive to this positive, this negative to this negative, and then ran it out, then I would have a 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery. And when we test, you'll see that we're at 13.31 volts right now. And on this battery, we're at 13.31 volts as well. But if I take this negative terminal and connect it to this positive terminal, I just created a 24 volt battery. And we can verify that if we put the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative, we'll see 26.62 volts. And that's called connecting your batteries in series. If you were to connect it in parallel, then that would be the positive, positive, negative to negative and put it out. Now this is capable of doing four batteries in series and then four batteries of those battery banks in parallel to create a much larger system. Now, something important that I want to discuss is I could not use what I have right now with that 12 volt inverter. I would have to connect it in parallel so I keep this at 12 volts. So if I hook this 24 volt battery to that 12 volt inverter, I'm gonna have some problems. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna test one of these batteries for the BMS, the capacity, and we'll go from there. But I just wanted to provide you with a demonstration on how to connect these in series and talk about connecting them in parallel. And each one of these batteries are protected by a BMS. That's something that we're gonna be testing a little bit later in the video. So we wanna see if we can shut down that BMS to make sure that it protects the battery. And while I'm talking about the BMS, these are equipped with a 100 amp BMS. It allows it to discharge at 100 amps and you can input charging at 100 amps also, but the recommended charging rate is at 20 amps. Now let's grab the dimensions, roughly 10 by eight and a half by six and a half. And for anyone that's new for these testing videos, this is a shunt display that just allows me to monitor what's going on with the battery. And you can see right down here in this corner, we need this number to match this number. Once we fully discharge the battery, that gives us our capacity test. And simultaneously, while we're doing the capacity test, I'm gonna try to discharge the battery at an over rate. So, probably around 125 to 150 amps to see if we can shut down that BMS and test that out as well. So if we leave this on low fan, we'll pull right around 100 amps continuously. But if we hit this power, then we're gonna bump it up to 138. Let's see how long that battery could take a discharge of 137, 138 amps when it should only be allowing a 100 amp discharge. Turn this off for just a second. I had to get another appliance involved because this was running at 136 to 138 amps continuously. I let it run for five minutes, but it didn't kick off the BMS. 
It may not be enough over to kick it off, you know, for that continuous discharge. So I'm, we're gonna try to get it around 160 to 180 and see what would happen from there. We're at 177 amps. Although the inverter, okay, it finally disconnected. That's good. I was starting to get worried that it wasn't gonna disconnect. Now the BMS should turn back on automatically. And when it does, the inverter should turn on and this would power back up because this doesn't have an on and off switch. This is digital, so that won't. But we're gonna see if the BMS will turn back on automatically as well. Now I will tell you, that I smell some electrical smells here. I don't know, I don't like that smell though. It's, it stinks. But I can't determine whether it's coming from my inverter or the battery. Now the battery was overloaded for sure. And I did that on purpose. Not something you'd ever wanna do, but for my testing purposes, I'm trying to push it beyond its limits. All right, something's not right. It's not turning back on. And this is what's happening when I try to turn the inverter back on. See how the light just flashed and turned back off? Now to try to determine whether I screwed up the battery or it burned up my inverter. So let me verify that we still have voltage. Yes, we still have 13.21 volts. All right, that was a big scare. And I thought that the battery burnt up my inverter because it was turned on, but it wouldn't come on completely. Turns out that my fuse that's in line, the 200 amp fuse had burnt out, but it's not completely burnt out. It's, it's weird. But as I took the cover off and looked at it, you can see that it's burnt, but it's not completely burnt out. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure if that should have happened because I was running at around 178 to maybe a maximum of 180 amps. And that fuse is 200. So I'm not sure why that would have happened. Um, and if you do know why that could have happened, leave me a comment below because I would like to learn more about that because we're under the actual rating of the fuse. But I'm glad that it protected the system our, our battery and our inverter are safe. We can continue with our testing and move on. So let's finish the capacity test. We're back in business. So I still gotta verify whether the BMS works on this. So let's try this one more time. I've got this turned down right now. We're at 78 amps. I'm gonna turn the oven on. That's gonna put us at 260 amps. I've seen it go up to. And I'm gonna turn this all the way up. We're going to push it. We're at 290 amps. Why isn't this shutting off? I'm going to let it run for just a second here. We're at 285 amps. That should be turning off. i got to turn it off. I don't trust running it like that, especially after we've already blown one fuse. So I'm just going to turn it off. We're just going to say that the BMS, it just didn't kick it off. And... These companies have to fix their BMSs. If you're gonna send a battery out to have me test it, make sure that the BMS works. The BMS might not have worked, but our capacity is almost 8% higher than the 100 amp hours advertised. And this battery definitely has its pros and cons. Uh, being that the BMS doesn't work, that's a problem for me, but whether that's important to you or not, I don't know. The capacity going over 8% better than what it states, that's a huge plus, but you just got to determine what's important to you and whether you would want to purchase this battery or not. My goal today was to provide you with the testing results off these watt cycle batteries, and hopefully you found value in that. And if you did, be sure to smash the thumbs up button because it really does help me out a lot. And if you have other questions, maybe on batteries, portable power stations, or anything solar, you may wanna check out my new forum that I built, diysolarbuilds.com. Go over there and ask a question, and I'll be sure to respond. If you enjoy these type of videos and you would like to see more of them, 
And when I put out new videos, you want to be notified, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And I hope to catch you in my next video.